Hello and welcome to a new episode of me ranting for 10 minutes. Today's topic is programming languages for data science slash statistics. Now I will be honest with you, the title was pure clickbait, so I won't have a very controversial video of R versus Python, etc. Uh, this video might be still a bit controversial uh, because I will tell you what you should not learn. Now, when I was teaching at the university and also in my different jobs, I had this discussion, yeah, this discussion a lot of times, R versus Python, etc. Now, in my opinion, you should learn both, really. Get very good at one, get very comfortable at one, be it R, be it Python. This depends a little bit on your field and on what they're teaching you right now. So if you're learning, if you're learning R at the university or Python at the university, stick with that, but learn enough of the other language that you're able to read code, understand what's going on, and also write some code, uh, because I don't think that nowadays it's possible to have a job in data science or statistics without knowing both languages. And again, I'm not saying that you should be an expert in both, but you should be uh, definite. I would say you should be comfortable in, in, in both, or at least very good in one and comfortable enough in the other that, yeah, you're, you, that you're able to review and also write some code. Also try to stay up to date with what's happening in both communities, in both languages, um, because I think that's important as well. Try to also learn packages. There are some out there that exist for both languages or that work the very same way. For example, TensorFlow and Keras are pretty much the same in R and Python. If you're doing Bayesian statistics, you can learn Stan uh, because you write your models in one file and then you execute those models in R or Python. But the syntax that you write your models in is totally independent of R and Python. Plus, uh, bind, there are bindings for R Python, but also for other languages, MATLAB, uh, Stata, etc. So uh, try to, to learn these kind of packages. There are packages in Python that um, work very similarly as ggplot that are basically re-implementations of ggplot2. So um, if you learn those packages, you would be able to use them in both languages. And I think that's very important. Now, what should you learn first? Well, it depends on what they're teaching you, as I said. And again, this video, uh, maybe I didn't say it at the beginning, but this video is mostly aimed at students. So not aimed at people that, of course, are already working. Well, I mean, you could always learn a new language, but uh, if you are like a Python developer or an R developer and you only do that every day, well, maybe maybe it's not so important to learn immediately the other language. But if you're a student, you will be soon on the job market. Well, hopefully soon, once this uh, Corona thing uh, is uh, over. Um, and I think both are really super important, really important. And again, not, you don't need to be an expert in both. Nobody in their right mind will ask you to be an expert in both, especially if they are looking for an entry job, a, a junior position. But be comfortable in one, learn enough of the other. Now, what shouldn't you learn? Well, uh, this might sound weird because uh, as a general rule, it's always good to learn new things. But there is this class of uh, languages or of software packages, statistical packages, as they call them, that I think you should avoid. Uh, I'm talking about things like or languages, programs like Stata, SAS, SPSS and, and, and that kind of, of stuff. So again, if you're working right now with SAS or with Stata, stick to it. Like I'm not telling you to switch now after, I don't know, 15 or 20 years that you've been using it. That's not the aim of this video. I'm really talking to people that will be soon on the job market. So why shouldn't you learn those? There's for me two big reasons. First of all, they're not open source. They're not free software. Now, I know a lot of people don't care about that, but I think it's really important, uh, especially when you see what happens with closed source software. Uh, for example, Windows have, has had these crazy updates, Windows 8, with this crazy interface that was forced on people. No way to change that. No way to just remove it and do something else. Well, I, I guess there was maybe some way to do it, but it was probably very complicated. Um, there is, I don't know, a feature that does not earn enough money. They just remove it. And the same can happen with these languages. These languages uh, are there to make 
this editor's money, of course. So if there is a feature that is not worth anymore or, or a platform that does, does not earn them enough money, they'll just drop support for it and that's it. You're done with it. Uh, if there is a feature that you would like to see, if they don't think it's profitable enough, you'll never see it implemented. You could implement it yourself, I guess, in at least some languages, maybe in Stata. I know people write packages for Stata, um, but I'm not sure that you could do that for, for every of those languages, to be quite honest. So I think open source is very important. And of course, there's also the uh, cost aspect because, uh, I mean, depending where you, where you live, uh, you know, buying a license could be uh, very prohibitive. So that's a first aspect. Oh, and something else. Um, this might not be so important, but at least you're, I would say, sure that uh, if you're using an, an open source language, you're sure that this language will never really go away. It might evolve, you know, it might, it might get forked, it might evolve, but it's never really going away. You know, an open source project in general, they just don't disappear. They might be forked, they might be abandoned in favor of another one, but that's they will be evolving whereas a closed source software well again if they're not profitable they just disappear and that's it i don't think that SaaS data or spss are going to disappear anytime soon because the companies behind those uh, products are huge but who knows you never know that's the first reason now the second reason which i think for some people might be even more important uh, and more practical is that these the this software, so these pieces of software, SAS, SPSS, and I don't want to single those out, those out specifically, but those those programs that are really, I would say, self-contained, like you, you start your, your SAS or your state or your SPSS GUI, and you work within that GUI and that's it, they really limit the way you do things. You have to do things the way they see it, and you have to to really use them in the way they were, the, 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 those engineers that built these pieces of software thought that you should be do, using them. And they all also limit uh, the way you, you will be working with your, with your data and the, the way also of, of thinking about your problems. Now, this is very, can sound very abstract and, and it is, but if you learn R or Python, guaranteed at some point especially if you're on on uh, on mac os or on uh, on linux but, but even on windows at some point you will be confronted to you know starting the shell and doing some stuff on the shell and that, that might sound scary at first but you will see that it is very powerful and that it will open the doors to a lot of new and exciting things at some point you will learn about git guaranteed you will learn about git you will learn about best coding practices good practices from soft, the software engineering world. You will learn how to write your unit tests. You will learn how to document your code properly. So you will learn all these things. You will be confronted to it at some point or another, guaranteed. Whereas if you stay within these very closed walled gardens of, of SAS, SPSS and Stata, it is very unlikely that you will get to learn about Git, about uh, you know you writing unit tests, about generating documentation uh, automatically, but all these, all these, all these things that are very important nowadays, because if you learn something like SPSS or if you learn something like Stata or SAS, and if you invest a lot of time in that, the also the the, the number of positions of jobs that you can look at will also be very limited. You will be constrained to a very particular type of job. Uh, and that's it. Whereas if you learn something like Python or R, but especially probably Python, maybe even more so than R, but you can really switch much more easily. Uh, for example, I, I was trained as an, econmet an econometrician. Then I, I started uh, a career uh, in data science. And now I'm doing basically both. I mean, doing data science slash statistics slash, you know, whatever, whatever is needed. Um, to solve problems, but I was able to learn these things. I was able to learn Git. I was able to learn uh, how to write unit tests, how to document my codes properly, etc. Because R did not constrain me. 
quite the contrary. It really, the, the language and the community also around it really encourage you to explore new things, to learn new stuff. And, and now there was, there was a discussion about uh, SED and AUK on Twitter and how you should also learn about them. I was already confronted to them. I was already using SED quite uh, a lot, AUK not so much. So now I'm, I'm reading on, on, on AUK again and I'm learning AUK uh, again. So this is not something that I would see happening if I would be using uh, SAS or SPSS or Stata or these type of things. And also, this, 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 as I said, they, they really force a way of working, of using the, 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 the programs, and you just have to deal with it. So, for example, for until very recently, until very, very recently, maybe it's been, it's not, maybe it's been a year now, you could not, in Stata, load more than one data set at a time. That it was just not possible. You could only be working with one data set at a time. Now they lifted this restriction. As I said, maybe it's it's been not it's it's not even been a year, I think, or maybe one year, whatever. But for the longest time, you could not load multiple data sets. So if you had to work with multiple data sets, you had to merge them. Well, you had to really write a lot of code to kind of merge them and then then have one big data set which contained everything you needed. But that's just how the way it was. And it's the same for these, uh, I mean, th you have these ways of working and you just have to do it like this and, and that's it. Now, of course, there's also this kind of, or not maybe not this kind, but there's also some restrictions in R or in Python or ways that are a bit weird. Uh, uh, Python and R do cer certain things in a weird way, but that's much more bearable, I would say, and in, you don't have these very weird or very strong restrictions in R or Python. So anyway, that would be my piece of advice. Learn both R and Python, because nowadays those are the languages of statistics, the languages of, of data science. If you are very motivated, learn, uh, as I said, maybe some, some command line, some bash, some some awk, some set, that, that would be quite useful as well, I think. Uh, but don't spend any energy or time on this uh, closed source uh, statistical packages because you will be very limited in what you can do. You will be very limited in the type of jobs that you can also uh, get. Uh, if And the more time you invest, the more energy you invest on these pieces of software, the more costly it will be for you to move away from them, to get to learn Python, to get to learn R, and to pursue a career in, in, another, in, an, in another field that could be not exactly your field, but close enough that you can jump easily. Uh, so yeah, that, that would be my, my piece of advice. Um, again, this is my opinion. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a good, it's not the gospel or anything. So if you don't agree, that's, that's fine. But from what I've seen in academia and in the industry, people that didn't know R or Python or, or really didn't know programming, let's say that, that were trained on, on SPSS or on Stata, they really struggled in, in being able to, to, to move from what they were doing. So they were really constrained in that job. And if they were happy, that's fine. But you know, you never know uh, how things are going to change in 10, 15, 20 years. So uh, might as well uh, have all uh, the, the options open, keep all the doors open. And I think the best way for that is to focus on open source languages like, like R or Python. So, See you next time. Stay uh, healthy. Uh, I hope that you are healthy, that your family is healthy, that your friends are healthy, that uh, everything is going well for you. Uh, in any case, if you, know, you have any questions or um, whatever, just uh, leave a comment down below. Cheers.